Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you a quick and easy way of making elevated contour maps in Cinema 4D using the Octane Render. You want to start with using either a plane or even a landscape geometry. Um, either of way works, but we're going to go with a plane so we have more options to work with with uh, how we want this landscape to look. I'm going to go ahead and add some segments to this just so we can really get the detail of when we start uh, deforming this plane. And to do that we're going to include a displacer. We're going to use noise to drive the elevation of this plane. So I'm going to go underneath into shading and we're going to add noise. So you can already see the result that we're getting. Um, and if you go inside, you have all these options to play around with, with how you want your noise to look like. Now if I increase the scale of this, I think we'll get a little closer to what I'm going for. I'm going to go with wavy turbulence. I really bring up the scale of this, so it looks like, almost like a large landscape. We're going to go back into the dis uh, displacer, and then we're going to increase the strength of this a little bit. Now, I might even start adding a little bit more segments, just so we can get a little bit more detail out of this. What you can do is selecting the plane that you've made and copy pasting. So, Control C, Control V. And I'm going to go ahead and shut these off. And we're going to bake this uh, geometry that we have here. So, I'm going to right click and go to current state to object. Now if I delete this, this should be a baked sort of geometry that we have. Okay, so once you're happy with this geometry, we're gonna go ahead and start making those cuts, those horizontal cuts that sort of make up the elevation contour map. We're gonna go into edge mode, and we're gonna right click on the geometry and then go to plane cut. If it doesn't look like this, what you can do alternatively is have the geometry selected, hit Shift C, and type in plane cut. So once we have the plane cut, we can start seeing a list of all these parameters. For a start, we can go to the plane mode and type and select world. You can kind of already see what sort of cut it's about to make, but as you can tell, it's sort of uh, cutting the wrong way. So we're going to fix that. If we go to plane, select XZ, you can sort of see that now that's cutting in the direction that we want it to cut. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to select a number of cuts. So this is primarily up to you to how much, well, I guess, space. So if we start with 10 cuts, you can start to see how that's looking. In this instance, I sort of want to I want the I want it pretty detailed, so I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the spacing. And check if that's sort of the right look. Now you can see that as I hover over the top of the geometry, it's not actually cutting all the way down, and that's because of the number of cuts. The number of spacing sort of controls how close we want these lines together. So if we want it to go from the top all the way to the bottom, we need to add more cuts. Now before we click on this, we need to make sure that Select Cuts is ticked. What this means is once we've clicked onto the geometry and make those cuts, we want to still have those edges selected because there's still something that, there's something that we still need to do with those selected edges. So I'm going to click on this geometry, the highest point, and now we have those edges selected. While those edges are still selected, we're going to hit Shift C, and we're going to type in Edge to Spline, and it's going to convert those edges into splines. So if I drag this out, so all of these other parts, you can now see those lines. What's going to happen is if I hit render on, in Octane, it's not really going to show anything. That's because we need to add a texture or even geometry uh, with using these lines. 
But if we add geometry, like using a sweep nerve, for example, it's going to be pretty heavy on the system and it's not going to work. It's going to make your program crash. So we're going to use octane hair to sort of uh, make those lines appear. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go to the plane, right click on it and go to obtain object tag. Now we want to select hair. We want to render as hair and you can already see the effect. So now that we've actually got the uh, lines showing up in the render, we're still going for that futuristic holographic look. And so we need to apply an emissive texture to those lines. So we're going to follow the usual process of making that texture. So we're going to add an octane diffuse texture. We're going to add a black body emission. If we click into that and we want to select our texture, now it's not showing up for me here just because I've got my scaling up for this tutorial. So I'm going to go into the node editor and find the RGB spectrum. And we're going to drag that into our texture. I'm going to go ahead and make this blue. Awesome. So we now have our missive blue texture. And I'm going to apply this onto our spline. Now we can barely see it, so we need to set it with a black environment. Right now, there's sort of a default light uh, environment just hitting this, these lines, but we want to turn that off. So we can either, a quick way to do it is just add a texture environment. And just clearing out the texture here. Now I don't really like the thickness of these lines, so I'm going to make these a little bit thinner. And for us to do that, we're going to go back into the Octane Object tag, and we're going to mess with the root and tip thickness. So I'm going to put in 0 0.01 and see how that looks. Now what I might also do is even turning on that plane back again. And that's sort of going to occlude some of those lines that we can see through if we didn't have this geometry. If I turn this plane off again, you can actually just see through and it looks a little bit messy. Now this is up to you. If you want to leave it off and see all those lines, that's completely up to you. But for this, I'll turn on the plane so we can actually see those lines or hide some of those lines, sorry. Now for added variance, we can even use a different value for either the root or tip just to break up those lines a little bit. So if I make this one, for example, you can see sort of the variance in this shape. I think it's a little bit too much, so I'll put 0.5. Actually, I'm going to put 0.2. Nice. And from here, you can sort of art direct how you want this to look. But for me, I just want to add some glow to this renderer. I'm going to add a camera. And I'm going to click on this. So we're looking through that camera. And if I go into the post-processing of this camera and enable, we're going we're gonna to boost a little bit of the bloom power. You can kind of see what's happening. It's adding that nice bloom effect across the render. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you create the elevated contour lines in Cinema 4D using the Octane Render using Octane Hair. Hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If there's any questions, let me know. Thanks, guys.